Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. Uh, welcome to my first attempt at podcasting. So um, I've been guests on a couple other podcasts, but this is my first time doing one on my own. So I wanted to start this uh, PCSL podcast as a much more efficient way to get information out to everybody who's interested in uh, what we're doing with the league. And uh, I wanted to get out a whole bunch of information about the upcoming Carbine Championship, which is going to happen uh, two weekends from now, um, actually starting on Friday and then the staff match earlier uh, on March 1st. So to start out, I'm going to upload this to YouTube and Instagram um, where you guys can comment and let me know what you think about uh, this format for information. Um, I'll get it on Apple and Google Podcasts pretty soon. So if you guys are on there, you can just subscribe and um, yeah, get notified when I do new episodes. So let's get right into it. Uh, let's go over match attendance first. So right now we have 80 shooters signed up total. So it's pretty low match attendance. I was hoping um, everyone would be super psyched after the two guns we did last year, but I understand that um, it was, probably was a mistake doing such a long match. Like a three-day format is hard for a lot of people. Um, and we have the night match running concurrently, which is why I did the three-day format. So it's like day, night, day, night, day, ending on Sunday. Um, and then obviously like round count is kind of high, especially if you're shooting both matches. And uh, I know ammo is still hard to get. And also I didn't market this match as much as I could have for sure. But that's okay. Uh, starting the PCSL was a lot more work than I expected it to be, even though I expected it to be a lot of work. Um, it turned out to be way more. <laughs> so um, I'm slowly but steadily developing um, you know, all the systems I need to make future matches much more streamlined for me and um, to free me up to work on content, which I really want to do, not just audio, but video content for sponsors, for shooters, for... Uh, education as far as competitive shooting goes and um you know bringing on guests i have a lot of stuff planned so uh but let's talk about the carbine match first so first let's go over logistics so we're gonna have to keep things pretty dynamic because of uh the amount of shooters that we have to run through and the amount of staff um obviously if we just did a normal schedule there'd be a ton of ghost squads so what we're likely going to do is have five large squads during the main match and the staff will be split into teams. And I don't think it's the best practice to have um, ROs dedicated to squads for the whole match that like cycle with the shooters. Uh, I, I think it's best to keep ROs on the same stages so that everything is consistent, um, as, as consistent as possible. So likely what we're going to do is have RO teams uh, assigned to a set of stages and then uh, move the squads around so that the RO team will take squads through their set and then return to the first stage of their set for their next squad. So that's my plan right now. And I think it's going to work pretty well. One of the things that is nice about having lower attendance is that you can be really flexible and everything runs very well and most likely had a schedule, which means that we'll probably be able to maybe shoot an extra stage per day and then finish even earlier on Sunday. We're also going to remove the vendor tent time block. Uh, that's kind of built in to get more shooters in the schedule if it's full. So instead, we're just going to deliver the swag bags throughout the match. Um, so that definitely means an early Sunday finish, maybe even around noon. Um, the charred burger truck that we had out at the December two gun championship. And they're going to be doing awards lunch for everybody, which I'm covering for the whole match, not just staff. Um, sponsorship is relatively low for this event, kind of goes along with participation, so we don't have that many prizes to give away. But of course, Cobalt and Surefire are huge supporters, and IWI has donated more Galils for this match. So uh, we're going to give away one to the entire field of competitors, and then one uh, dedicated to a staff random draw. Although our turnout's pretty low for this match compared to uh, capacity, I guess, I'm super excited with the stage designs. I think everyone who comes out is going to really enjoy themselves. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about stages. So first the round count. Um, final counts, we got the day match coming in at 295. That's 11 scored stages. And the night match, uh, it's a little higher than my estimate, 174. So originally I had them at 300 and 150. But yeah, final round counts, day match 295 and night match 174. And remember, that's with uh, two per paper accounted for. So if you're shooting K-Zones, you can get away with a lot less if you want to save some ammo. 
So what should you expect the stages to be like? So if you participated in either the April last year or December two gun championships, um, you can imagine it almost identical style, except remove the handgun portion. So everything is going to be doable with the pistol caliber carbine. Um, there's not going to be any alternate targets for long range. Uh, for this one, since it's just one gun, you do not need a sling. Um, but you will need to reload on certain stages, even in competition division, if you have a large mag. So there will be mandatory reloading. Uh, we're doing a couple of those one-shot uh, clay or one-shot drop mag targets um, before moving positions. Uh, the hardest shot that you're going to expect to see uh, will be a clay at 40 yards, six inch squares um, at about 60 to 70 yards. They might be a little closer than that. And then I think the hardest shot of the match, probably because there's a lot of risk, is going to be um, it's going to be supported from the tank trap and it's going to be an eight MOA center mass plate that's inside a, a reduced size torso with a cutout in the middle. So the cutout is seven inches. The torso is going to be a no shoot target. And then the center plate is what you need to hit. Now that's also going to be a drop mag target, which means that you're going to remove your magazine and fire the one shot um, so that you're completely unloaded before proceeding to the next area. Um, that's going to be, you know, seven inches uh, is eight MOA at exactly, I guess, 87 and a half yards, but I'm going to put it somewhere at like 80 to 85. That's my target. So um, with, with 223, you're basically dead on, you know, whether you have a 50 or 100 yard zero. And then with the PCC, I'd highly recommend um, getting out there and making sure that you know where you're hitting at about 80 yards. So as far as stage styles go, uh, because we're doubling up most of the base stages for the night match, uh, those stages are not super tricky. So most of the movement is going to be pretty linear. Uh, there is no retreat movement on any of the night stages and only one of the day stages which is in the lower bays has any uprange movement so it's it's kind of simplified i wanted to make sure that we didn't have anything happen crazy at night you know like uh make sure that all the stage procedures were pretty straightforward and safe um, for everybody as far as options go there are a lot of small options like order of engagement things or uh, positional decisions, like where you want to stand, if you want to blend positions, that kind of thing. But we're most likely going to see everybody shoot the stages with more or less the same plan. So really, it's going to come down to execution and accuracy at speed. So let's go over the stages one by one, and I'll give you a good idea of what to expect for each one. So I'm going to call them by the area that they're in um, instead of the stage name. Stage names will come later. Uh, so stage one is going to be in the pit, like usual. This one's going to be 22 rounds and we're doing a limited round start. So you're going to have four rounds loaded in your first magazine and you're going to be in a shooting box that is exactly a hundred yards away from those two steel on the hill. And you can shoot the, the steel twice each and they're going to be scored as NPMs. So the way we're going to do that, I, I have to double check to make sure that logistically it makes sense in the tablets, but I'm pretty sure we can just have them as paper. And as you're scoring them, you'll always get either alpha or NPM on them. Uh, so that's four hits that are available from that box with your first four rounds. You can reload if you miss and continue to engage. Um, otherwise, you're going to proceed into a roped shooting area and shoot some paper on the move. And then we're going to reuse that uh, sideways tire that's like sitting in the middle of the creek bed. And from completely on the tire, you're going to engage the two skinny poppers, skinny mini poppers at about 50 yards. So uh, you just have to be completely on the tire, no part of your gun or body touching the ground. Stage two is going to be the creek bed. It's going to be 24 rounds. We're not going to be in the creek bed this time. We're going to be up into the left on that terrain, uh, shooting down into the creek bed at some paper. We're going to have a rope shooting area. You're going to start with some paper on the move, and then you're going to enter a pillbox, which is made with a bunch of steel barrels with a two by four frame on top. So you're going to have to kind of crawl in there. Um, there's going to be a fabric kind of mesh cover that we're going to put on top. Um, there will be three openings in the pillbox and two steel available from each one. So you got to engage two steel from each opening before you exit. And then when you exit, there will be uh, some more paper on the move. 
the steel is going to be a mix, um, some six inch squares, uh, a reduced size torso at like a hundred, something like that. And then a couple circular plates. All right. Stage three, this is going to be in the lower, uh, double combined base, 24 rounds. And I'm making you crawl through the tube again. So I hope you guys like that. Um, but basically it's going to be some fast paper on the left side. You're going to do a drop mag shot to a clay. That's pretty close, like five yards. Don't miss, you know, hold at the top <laughs> and then, um, unloaded, you're going to go through the tube. And then in the right bay, I'm going to have the mini sawhorse there that you guys know from the other matches. And there's going to be three clays at the end of the bay, which is about 40 yards. Those will be hanging from a rope or something like that. And then, uh, so yeah, so the clays will be from the sawhorse. Then you're going to move about, you know, five to 10 yards over to the right and then finish on some more paper targets. Then from the lower bays, you're going to head up to stage four, which is on bay three of the six uh, in the main area. So this stage, stage four is going to be 30 rounds. It's an L-shaped course where you start at the base of the L. Um, it has some pretty nice flow. There's two offhand steel from the start at 50 yards. And in the middle, there is a swinger activated by a Targets USA stomp pedal. Then we go to stage five in bay four, 26 rounds. This is a quicker side to side course um, with the turret port. So there's going to be a relatively small shooting area where you have three sets of three targets and you're going to have to turn the port to engage the center three. And then on either side of that area, there's going to be a shooting box that's offset a couple yards. And there are four reduced size torsos at the back of the bay at about 50 yards. And you're going to engage each of the four torsos once from each box on either side. So that's eight hits on steel and then the nine paper targets from the center. Then one bay over, bay five. Um, this one's super fun. 32 rounds. Uh, it's going to start with two offhand steel. Um, I'm putting a lot of offhand steel in this match, by the way. So, uh, Practice your 50 yard offhand. That'd be pretty helpful. So after those two steel, you're going to enter a shooting area, which is built around the Subaru from before that we moved over and a new Dodge van, like a passenger van. You're going to engage some targets in and around walls and then actually proceed into the van. And there's going to be a target that you can only get from inside shooting out the right window. And then after that, you're going to exit out the back of the van and finish with some more paper. One thing that I'm doing on this one is there will be two targets, which are the two available from inside the van, which will be the uh, new Mozambique array or presentation that I've kind of uh, tested before and I really like it. So basically what it is, is a hardcover target with the head cut out. So there's a clay inside and then a separate full carbine target under that. So basically it's a full target and a clay um, and it acts like a Mozambique drill where you're shooting two in the center mass at the bottom and then go up to the headshot, which is the clay. And what's cool about this with the K zone is that you can actually really quickly engage this target set with, um, with a well-placed headshot and then a shot to the clay. So it's pretty cool. Next is stage seven, one bay over. Um, this is where the Connex is. So this one's all paper, 44 rounds. The shooting area is kind of like an S shape and you're going to start in the back and, uh, yeah, just, hose those 44 rounds, but there are some tricky positions on this one. So make sure that you have your stage plan, uh, well visualized. Then you're going to go around the corner, um, to the car area, the wide bay. So on the cars, um, we have five of them now because we took the Subaru over to the van stage. So this one is 22 rounds. It's a very fast and fun stage. Um, it's kind of like a reverse C where you're starting in the back left. Uh, you're going to shoot some paper, go around the RAV4, go down range. There's some more paper hidden behind some windows, two more of the Mozambique target presentations. And then you're going to go around uh, a wall to finish where you got some too close paper. You can shoot on the move. And then another activator, um, a targets USA stomp pedal activator that will be mounted to the hood of the minivan. And that's going to activate a swinger, which will be your final target. Then immediately to the right of that, we have the hill, the natural bay. Um, this one's going to be 20 rounds, pretty simple. Uh, this will be one of the night stages. So I'm, I had kind of a compromise, like I didn't want to run the night stages all in, in base. So I threw this in as kind of a natural terrain feel. Um, I think it should be really fun at night. So 
yeah, it's just 20 rounds. It's going to be two sets of two steel um, broken up by some close and medium range paper. So you're going to shoot some steel to start, um, hose some close paper, run up the hill, post up, shoot a couple more steel, and then um, proceed for some medium range paper. Uh, should be easy to see white steel with whatever kind of weapon light you have, but they might be at 60 yards. So uh, maybe make sure you have a light that is good enough to see that far away. And this is a good time to plug Surefire. So if you guys would like to borrow a weapon light for the match, um, Andrew's bringing out a whole bunch of demo lights that, uh, you know, worst case, you can zip tie to your gun, but they they mount to Picatinny, M-Lock, that kind of thing. So uh, whatever carbine you have, we'll figure out a way to strap on the light and you guys can use a, a demo light for the night match if you'd like. Then around the corner, we have stage 10 at the Overlook. This one's going to be 27 rounds. Um, I'm really excited about this one, although some of you guys might hate me for it. <laughs> so on the upper section uh, of the flat plateau, there there's going to be some paper up there. And then you're going to do a drop mag shot on the center mass surrounded by no shoot that I talked about earlier. So it's a, it's like two plates, you know, front and back. The front plate is going to be a torso with a seven inch hole cut out of the center. And then there's a circular plate behind it. So the torso is going to be painted red for a no shoot and the plate behind it is going to be painted white. So, uh, you're going to have one shot to engage that. Uh, if you miss, you can, you know, reload, um, chamber around, remove your mag again and re-engage. Um, but yeah, it's going to be fun just to see how people do. I actually think everyone's going to do much better than they expect because the risk of that no shoot is going to force you to really pay attention to your shot. Um, yeah, so after that, you're going to run down the hill uh, with your unloaded gun, then reload uh, near the bottom, go up the next hill. There's going to be a bunch of paper there. And then from the second hill downrange, there's going to be two more reduced size torsos. Um, probably at about 100, maybe a little closer than that. And uh, yeah, both of these positions will be supported. So you'll have a tank trap for that drop mag one shot, and um, downrange will probably be another sawhorse on the other hill. And then the last stage is stage 11 in the bowl, which is that new area um, down the hill to the right at the very end of that long 150-yard berm. Um, we used this at the December match, but not at the April match last year. So this one I haven't completely designed yet, but I know I'm going to make it 24 rounds and most likely it's going to have two sets of two steel again, broken up by some paper. Um, I think I'm going to give you guys a port to shoot two long torsos from at the end. Like you can brace from the port and there'll be some like mandatory paper through the port and then a bunch of paper on the move and probably some position to shoot those two um, strap hanger steel that are in the hill right now. So yeah, that's it for the stages. I hope you guys are as excited as I am about them. Um, oh yeah, let's talk about the night match pretty quick here. So the night match is gonna be run on stages four to nine, which are the main set of base stages, plus the cars, and then plus the hill, which is like that natural terrain bay. Logistically for the night match, uh, what you can expect is everyone, even um, non-shooting, spectators, I guess everyone on the property is going to be required to wear uh, glow sticks front and back chem lights, I guess, if you want to be tactical. Um, and we'll have zip ties to attach them to whatever you need. Uh, they easily go on, you know, your, your belts or a jacket or something like that. And um, on the actual stages, I'm going to have some lights that are uh, relatively dim. I don't want to illuminate targets. I more want to illuminate shooting areas just to make sure that everyone's safe, um, especially my ROs who are going to be ROing some competitors using night vision. So I didn't want to have any super blackout stages um, just for safety reasons because of that. That being said, though, I'm going to do my best to keep all the targets as dark as possible so that you guys really do have to use your weapon light or night vision to see everything. But yeah, the, the stages are going to be identical to the day match. Um, I think that's the best way to go so that we don't have to keep track of, you know, stage uh, conversions every day and night. Um, I think it'll run much more smoothly. And especially as a first time for doing this night carby match, uh, that's what we're going with. 
but I would love your guys' suggestions if uh, you have some night match experience and you saw something that worked really well. Um, and I would like to do this again next year and maybe schedule it a little better so that it's more accessible to more people. But I think that's all I got for today. So that's what you can expect so far at the PCSL Carbine Championship and Carbine After Dark matches coming up in about two weeks. Uh, also, I'd love your feedback on what you thought of this podcast format. Do you like the format? Would this be a good way for me to keep doing um, news and updates and get information out to you guys in the future? I like it a lot so far. I think it allows me to get into a lot more detail. And also, it's not so time consuming like uh, video production. So if I have something I need to get out quick, I can just you know hit record and talk about it. So I will try to do my best to get Google and Apple podcasts up and get this uploaded there. But for now, I'm going to put it on YouTube and Instagram and send you guys the link, um, whoever signed up for the match. So I'd love your comments there. Or of course, just shoot me an email at info at um, I check that all throughout the day. And that is it. So thanks for listening to my first episode. See you guys later.